Welcome to another Digital Devotional. My name is Steve Jewell, and I'm so glad to have you with us uh, throughout this study. And we're working our way now through the Gospel of Mark. We're now into chapter 3 of Mark. And if you've been following along with us so far, I'm sure you probably realize that in a 10-minute devotional, sometimes a smidge longer, that that obviously we're not able to plumb the the depths of everything. And, and, and I hope what these lessons are uh, is something that whets your appetite, something that that stirs in you and, and, and st- uh, stimulates you to want to further dig into the scriptures and learning and reading and studying. And, and as always, I, I make myself available if you uh, want to leave a comment in the comments section or reach out to me, those of you that, that have my contact information, and, and pose questions, thoughts, curiosities, uh, maybe even some some pushback on things that are in here because I want us uh, and, and really long for us to uh, be able to appreciate the not only the, the depth of the meaning of the passage, but that we would be able to also embrace the uh, important and significant application that God is is wanting to see uh, lived out in us and through us as we grow in him. And so now we turn to Mark chapter 3, and we'll be looking at uh, verses 7 through 12 in this lesson. And so as we prepare to uh, study this passage, let's, uh, let's pray. God, to you we turn our attention. We turn our hearts and our minds. I pray, God, that you'd clear away from us distractions that we might be able to hear and gain insight and understanding as you speak by the Holy Spirit and that you would apply in our lives the importance of this word. Lord, even despite my words this this morning, despite my teaching in this lesson, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would minister to our hearts and our minds this truth, that it would be lived through us in our day and in our circumstances for your glory and for your honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So Mark chapter seven, or 3, verses 7 through 12. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea and from beyond the Jordan and from around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him. And he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him, crush him. For he healed many so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. Now, it's interesting that uh, Jesus here is withdrawing and and he's withdrawing with his disciples and he's going to the sea. And and this withdrawing is is not merely to seek solitude, but I I really think that this this uh, this seeking, uh, I'm sorry, this withdrawing is it symbolizes how the righteousness of Jesus as it is lived out in us, as, as it calls us and is lived out in us, it, it separates us from the world so that we are in it, but yet not of it. And, and so Jesus here is withdrawing, and th- there's a great number of places listed here. We have uh, people from Galilee and Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan, and from around Tyre and Sidon. And, and what's really kind of interesting about this is, is the locations represented by the crowds of people gathering around Jesus. Uh, it, it, it covers the expanse of what was the, the 12 tribes of Israel, the nation of Israel, even under King David. And, and so uh, effectively, uh, word about Jesus and knowledge about Jesus has extended not only to the limits of what was once the inheritance of the 12 tribes of Israel, but it's also extended beyond. And so there's a sense in which this is starting to spill over beyond Israel, or at least what were the traditional 
boundaries of Israel. And, and so Jesus is growing and spreading popularity was on account of his widespread ministry of both healing and deliverance. And, and that's what we have going on here. Jesus is, is, is making such an impact as, as the, the uh, incarnate Son of God, making such an impact that, that is so uh, discernibly different and distinct from the, the entrenched tradition of uh, the, the Jewish uh, ministry of, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. And, and Jesus really is, is recognizable as unique and and is drawing people to him and, and so he's he's doing this ministry of healing he's healing people that are sick and and hurting and diseased but he's also casting out demons those that are uh, oppressed and and filled with with the demonic and and so to to heal the diseased and and in this case also to deliver those who are pressed by demons uh, one of the things that we want to be careful about here is this is a profoundly transformative work that Jesus does. And it's it's so transformative that it's drawing people to him. But let's not rush too quickly to equate this healing and this deliverance from demon oppression, uh, that it is not to be equated with salvation as we know it. Uh, in a sense, uh, this this does a couple things. It points out the the divine authority of Jesus. This is this is in a sense a testimony to the reality of who he is to heal and deliver as he's doing. The other thing that it does is it is a work of preparation in the heart and mind of those who are made physically whole so that they might come to a place of surrendered and believing trust in Jesus. Now, I say that uh, kind of by way of uh, invitation uh, to have a question or uh, one or two questions I want to pose to you as you perhaps can take some time to reflect upon your own uh, faith in Christ, your own journey to Christ. And, and it would be interesting for maybe you to uh, reflect upon and think about what was it that God did in your life that was preparatory for you in believing trust to surrender to him? You know, what were the circumstances in your life? I know in, in my life, uh, it was not only a, a dissatisfaction with the uh, uh, really indulgent and fleshly things that I was doing. Uh, it was, it involved um, the death of my grandmother and so it was the circumstance there and and the dissatisfaction of these pleasures uh it, it also involved you know a lot of difficult questions that i was wrestling with uh intellectually and academically at that time and and so it, in my life the the preparatory work that god was doing that really i only come to recognize now as i look back on it were were these these crises these difficulties these challenges these um these feelings of of dissatisfaction and emptiness even as i was doing things that i thought would make me happy and 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 it would feel good and and so what were the things that god did as a preparatory work in your life for these people uh it, for many of them it was healing they were healed of a disease. They were healed of an infirmity, a sickness, uh, maybe a, a, a crippling injury to a hand or a foot. Or uh, we will go on and learn uh, about uh, people that have uh, bleeding issues and, and folks that are paralyzed and, and uh, that are even dead. And, and Jesus will raise the dead and also deliverance of, of demons. And while I wholeheartedly believe in the spirit realm and the reality of the demonic, uh, the demon the delivered from the demonic was not only to free someone from the overt oppression of Satan and his minions, but it also involves sometimes a uh, a, a mental or an, an intellectual stronghold in our life where we have such an entrenched belief or view that is in error, but it it is so entrenched in our minds and in our thinking that we are unable to see it as error. 
you know, uh, Paul will talk about how the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. And so Jesus is able to heal the that which physically keeps us, but also that which spiritually keeps us from faith in him. So I invite you to reflect upon that, the preparatory work that God has done. But if you have never really surrendered to Jesus Christ as Savior of your life, forgiver of your sins, deliverer from death, and uh, the one who adopts you into the family of God, uh, I wonder what circumstances are going on in your life whereby God is longing to get your attention. God is longing to soften your heart and to uh, illuminate the eyes of your heart to be able to see and behold in him the beauty and wonder and the glory and the hope and the life that he can offer you through his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. Brothers and sisters, here we have uh, many people flocking from all over to get to Jesus because Jesus is profoundly distinct. As a matter of fact, never on the face and the soil of the earth has walked one as distinct and unique as Jesus. And there is no one greater to whom we can come and bow down and surrender and invest and spend our life for than Jesus. Let us pray. God, I pray now that you would lay hold of each of our hearts. If we have never trusted you, God, that, that you would stir our hearts to really know what it is to trust you and love you and cherish you. God, if we have, and maybe we're struggling, or maybe we are really walking in victory, I pray, God, that you would lead us and guide us to to take stock in, to reflect upon and, and cherish the journey on which you have walked us and by which you and in which you have met us. God, that we would be, remember, be reminded of your faithfulness even when we were lost. I love the image of the uh, parable of the lost son or the loving father, as we might call it how he came to himself and in his broken circumstances recalled how good and glorious he had it. Oh God, how good and glorious do we have it in your family. Would you comfort and assure us with that promise and that hope and that certainty right now? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our study, our journey together. And, and I hope you hear in my heart uh, that, that I long to not only rightly teach and divide the word of God so that we are faithful to uh, the, the, the truth of what God is saying, but that it would be applied to our heart, that this is living, a living word, an active word. And so I hope you're encouraged with that. Drop me a line. Let me know how this is touching and blessing your heart. Uh, and, and I'm so grateful to have you uh, journeying again with us in this lesson together through Mark. May God bless you this day.